Hello, and welcome to cs to go with Code Savvy. My name is Eileen, and this is part of our Getting Started series, videos designed to help you work on some of our other challenges. In this video, we'll look at some basics of a text-based language called Python. Python is a popular choice for people who are just switching from a blocks-based language for the first time. There are lots of different tools you can use to write Python, but we're going to highlight an online code editor called REPLIT. REPLIT is awesome because it's free and it runs right in a web browser on any device. No need to download anything. REPLIT's address is easy to remember because it's just its name. Open any web browser and type in REPL.IT. It should take you to a screen that looks something like this. If you think you'll want to save what you create, you can hit sign up and make a free account. If you're just here to explore for a little while, you can start out by just hitting start coding. Once you click start coding, you'll have to choose what language you want to work in from a long list. One that just says Python will probably be near the top, and that's what we're going to start looking at first. If you scroll through, you may see other choices that have the same logo, and we'll look at a couple of those a little bit later. But for just getting started, choose regular Python from near the top, then hit create REPL. What you'll see next is your REPL, a new project in Python that you can use to create anything you want. Let's look around a little bit at some of the things you'll see in your REPL. At the top, you'll see your REPL's randomly chosen name. If you create an account, then you can change these names. On the far left side are tabs for some tools that you probably won't need just yet. Feel free to explore them, especially settings, but we won't go into them in depth in this video. The tab that opened automatically was files. As your projects get more complicated, you may need to create other files or even folders, but for right now, you can work with the file that it created automatically for you. That file is called main.py. The py stands for Python, and you can see its name both in your file list and at the top of the code editor in the center. That shows you that that's the file that you're ready to start typing in. You can just start typing in that code editor, or you can click on where it says run some examples. That will give you several options for example programs in Python that you can open up, take a look at, read the code for, and run. This can be a great way to learn new things. Try to predict what the code does, then run it, and see. This one said print hello world, and when I clicked the big green run button, it printed out the words hello world into the shell on the right. Cool. Print is an example of something called a function in Python. It's kind of like a verb, an action word that the computer recognizes and can do, and you can tell that because it's blue. In this case, it tells the computer to print out whatever is between the parentheses. And what's between the parentheses here is a phrase in quotation marks. That tells the computer that it's a string. It should be read as regular text and not as code. If we change what's in the string and run it again, it changes the output. If we want to print more text, we can write another print statement by typing the word print. You'll see it turn blue. In parentheses, then in quotation marks. You can see I've used single quotes on one line and double on the other. Both are okay as long as you don't mix and match. Make sure your line still ends with quotation marks and parentheses. REPLIT should help you with that. And then hit run, and now you'll see it prints two lines of text. Two print statements, two separate lines of text output. So now we know about output, getting the computer to talk to the user. But what if we want to let the user talk back to the computer? We call that input, and that's also the Python function that will let that happen. So you'll type the word input, then parentheses, just like with print, and then in quotation marks inside the parentheses, put whatever question you want to ask. Now when you click run, the two print statements still print, but the input statement prints out what was in the parentheses and then waits for an answer. So now I can give input, but the computer won't do anything with it unless I store it in a variable. To do that, I type the name I want the variable to have and then an equal sign. This tells the computer, take whatever is input when it asks what's your name, and store it in a variable, in a box in the computer's memory with the label user's name. To double check that that happened, I can have it print out the value of user's name. It's not in quotes, so it's not gonna print literally user's name. It will print whatever I entered. Great, so it can repeat back what you say. But let's make this a lot more interesting by combining printing a string, like we did with Howdy World, with printing the value of the variable. To put those two things together, I can use a plus sign. So now it will print exactly the string hi, comma, and then the value stored in the variable. It asked me for my name, and it uses that information to greet me by name. That's awesome. So now what? 
As far as Ripple it goes, if you're already logged in, it's been saving automatically. If you didn't create an account when you started, but now you want to save this project after all, you can still hit sign up. And if you want to send what you've created to someone else, you can use the share button on the upper right. As far as continuing to explore Python, a project idea you could try is a fill-in-the-blank story, where you ask the user to type in different parts of speech, store them in variables, and then print out a story that includes whatever they typed in. You could also explore some of the Python add-on options available through Repl.it. For example, when you choose a language, if you pick Python with Turtle instead of regular Python, then you'll have some extra tools for exploring coding art by giving a Turtle instructions to draw in different colors. There are also tons of other resources you can use to keep developing your skills. Books, online tutorials, YouTube videos. It may seem hard at first, but the more you keep at it, the bigger and better programs you'll be able to write. One resource, of course, we hope you'll explore is our weekly CS2Go challenges. Many of the intermediate level videos use Python, and now that you know the basics, you have the tools you need to use those videos to keep building your skills and get inspired to build new things. Thanks for joining me for this introduction to Python and to Repl.it. If there are other languages or tools you'd like to see getting started videos for, by all means let us know. Otherwise, if you want to make sure you keep seeing new videos about Python and other languages, consider subscribing to our channel. Happy coding! We can't wait to see what you create!